All right, so as promised, if you're wanting to lean more towards an offensive fantasy draft in Madden 20, here are my tips on how to draft a good offense. Playing as the Colts this time around, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we got pick 23 in the first round. I'd say here, if Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, or Russell Wilson are available as your quarterbacks, go ahead and take them. So it looks like Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes have already been taken. Russell Wilson's still available. Still a lot of good running backs left. And still a lot of really good wide receivers left. So if going for an offensive draft, you really want to get a good quarterback. And if one of those three are available, since they have really good X factors, go ahead and draft them in the first round. Now in round two, now that we got our quarterback, let's go ahead and get him some weapons. I like Bobby Wagner there, but since we're doing an offensive draft, I'd like to go with a wide receiver. Julio Jones looks good. He has an X factor. I also see Tyree Kill down here too. He's really fast and really good. Oh, but he's only a star. So I really want that X factor. Try to get as many of those as I can. So we'll go with Julio. All right, so even though this is gonna be an offensive draft, I still have to draft some defensive players because I do wanna have a competitive team at the end of it all. I don't wanna just focus only on offense. So in order to have a complete team, I'm gonna draft some studs on defense when it makes sense and when I'm in a situation where I'd be reaching for an offensive player. I maybe should have gone pass rusher, but I really want to have a good linebacking core and be able to cover the pass and pass coverage. So I went with a pass coverage linebacker with picks three and four, just to make sure I'm set up on defense in the middle of the field. And then now that I've got some cornerstones on defense, let's go back to offense. Let's see who's left on offense. So I immediately see AJ Green down here. Outside of lineman, he's a really good offensive player. He's probably still left here because he was injured and didn't play at all in the regular season. But I'm going to use that to my advantage and take him with my fifth round pick. Just want to double check and just make sure this was a good pick and see how many other good wide receivers are left. Didn't really look like there was too many, so AJ Green, smart choice here. Now in round six, I started looking at offensive linemen just to see what was out there. Usually six is a little early for me to start picking offensive linemen. I really do like to wait till round eight at the earliest. 10, ideally, if I'm comfortable with it. But again, since I was focusing mostly on an offensive draft, but since I'm focusing mostly on an offensive draft this time around and I'm trying to get the best available, I really wanted to try to focus and get a good offensive line. So I picked a little bit early here for offensive line, but in the end, it'll all work out. Just want to make sure I have a good foundation there. But then right away in round seven, I didn't want to be too offensive heavy. You know, I want to be offensive minded, but not offensive heavy. So in round seven, I went back and drafted defense. And again, I wanted to shore up that pass coverage. So I got a CB here. Got the, one of the best ones available at the time in the zone scheme. See here in round eight, I went back to O-line. That's kind of my sweet spot. So I wanted to draft a couple here where I usually would select those. I just wanted to make sure I got at least one early. And again, I'm drafting mostly guards. Guards are going to be your best value on the offensive line. The really good tackles go pretty early in the draft process. So you're going to get the best value with guards. That way you can move them around your offensive line and still have a really good player in that tackle spot. So now at this point I have my quarterback, I have two wide receivers, and I have a couple offensive linemen. But on the defensive side I only have two linebackers and a corner. At 11, I want to go back and switch to offense again. So I'm really looking at running backs. I like to have a little bit 
of a receiving back, but I also want to maintain that power so he can run through the tackles. Philip Lindsay is a better receiving back, but a little bit on the smaller side, less strength. So Devonta Freeman, you're my pick here. And I'm looking at Marshall Yonda. He's still a really good guard that's left, highest rated player overall, but he's on the older side. Use that to your advantage. The older guys get drafted later than everyone, even if they're good. Marshall Yonda is a good example of that, so I'm going to wait draft somebody else here. Every position has this. Even Greg, o Greg Olson and Delaney Walker, they're on the older side, so if I want them, they'll be there later. So I really want to try to get a good pass blocking tight end here and run blocking. That's what I'm looking for. Knowing that I can get a pass catching older tight end a little bit later. Switching back to defense. Just trying to shore up my defensive line a little bit. And I really want that strength of my defense to be my linebackers. That way I can stop the run and kind of take away that middle of the field with my zone schemes. You see Marshall Yonda is still here a few rounds later than I even wanted to take him. So I'm going to snatch him up before he's gone. I got two really good wide receivers. Having a third would be really helpful. I want somebody with speed though. Larry Fitzgerald's on the older side as well, so he'll probably be there even a little bit later. So I'll draft Sammy Watkins, who's also fast. So I'll draft Sammy Watkins, who's really fast, and try to go back and get Larry Fitzgerald later. You really want to make sure you have three to four really good wide receivers. In order to have a good offense, you have to make sure your receivers can get open, and I also find that they tend to sub out quite a lot too if you do a lot of pass plays. You know, you don't want to get down to the red zone and then all of a sudden you have your backups in and you don't have any good backups that can get any separation. So here we go, I'm looking back at my tight ends, trying to go find a good pass catching tight end that can also block a little bit. Jimmy Graham's not the best blocker, but he's on the older side, so he's here later. And even though he hasn't really been too relevant in real life, he's still a stud in pass catching in Madden. So here in the later rounds, I'm just trying to shore up my roster, fill any gaps that I might have, draft my defensive players that I still need, and just kind of fill any role positions within the offense. Try to get some young players if I can, if there's still any good ones left, and just try to find these gems in the later round. See, even in round 21, Larry Fitzgerald is still here. Gonna go a little bit faster now. Just because I am trying to fill in these extra positions or gaps. I mentioned the old guys getting picked last. Spoiler alert, even towards the end, I'm still gonna end up with Larry Fitzgerald because he's still gonna be there. Going to draft one of the best kickers in the game, just to make sure I'm set up pretty good as a balanced team. Alright, I feel like I got a pretty good roster. Not going to spend the time drafting the rest of it. Usually towards the end of the 20s or early 30s in the rounds. It's just the players don't make that big of a difference or impact anyway, so I just sim it. Alright, let's see who we got. Drafted Russell Wilson with my first pick. Looks like the computer drafted me Cody Kessler as my backup. See, and here's Russell Wilson's X factors and his abilities. He's got some really good ones. His blitz radar is going to be useful. If you don't get Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, or Russell Wilson, I'd almost tell you to wait a couple rounds before drafting your quarterback. You can probably still pick up somebody like Deshaun Watson in like rounds two or three. Devonta Freeman, solid running back with Miles Sanders, a rookie, backing him up. Pretty good running backs. Got Anthony Sherman as fullback. And look at this wide receiver group. Looks like one, two, three, four, five out of six were first round picks. Kevin White's down there. Still counts. First round pick. But my top four are absolutely stacked. Julio Jones having an X-Factor, 
and Larry Fitzgerald being all reliable in the middle of the field. Looks like Nick Boyle and Jimmy Graham won a good uh, blocking tight end, won a good pass catching tight end. And then I got Mo Alley Cox down here from the actual Colts team, who at the moment is a project, but has some really good physical traits as well. My tackles, I'm going to change those out and switch those for my guards. Got one left guard, so he'll probably stay the same. But I got a couple different right guards here that are going to fill some spaces on my offensive line mainly in my left and right tackle and my center spot. And then overall, I'm going to have a really stacked offensive line from that. Now that's the offense. Pretty stacked offense. Defense is going to be a little lackluster from that, but we'll make it work. So we'll roll through the defense real quick. They're not going to be too great. They're not going to be stopping everybody, but they should be able to keep us in contention and do fairly decent. Got some good role players, got some good cornerstones on defense. Got my pass coverage linebackers, cover the center of the field, and then my corners. Got Jonathan and Joseph later in the draft, only be again because he was older. And then I tried to make up for my uh, lack of defense a little bit with my safeties. The strength of this defense is definitely in the linebackers. So let's simulate the season and see if I can make the playoffs with this team. Let's see how I did. So we went 8-8, eight eight, which isn't great, but it looks like we did win the division and did make the playoffs. So overall in the AFC, it doesn't look like anybody did good, with the number one seed being the Chargers. The most winning team being 10-6. and six. Let's go ahead and take a look at the schedule and see how close these games were. So yeah, right off the bat, it looks like we had a couple close losses and a couple blowout wins. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Later this week, I'll be posting the defensive version of this and show you some tips on how to draft the best defensive fantasy draft in Madden 20 possible. Thanks for watching, and catch you next time.